Watching Gears. Brought to you by LMC Truck. Keep them on the road. Hey, welcome to Gears. If you're watching this show, it means you probably have a cool car truck project going together in your garage. But Gears isn't just about cars and trucks. No, it's about all things mechanical. Because gearheads love that crazy, out of the ordinary stuff. It's exciting. And if you understand that stuff, it actually makes you a better builder or mechanic. So we try to roll that stuff in from time to time. There's something to hold on to. It's like a booger on your finger. And that means that today we're going to step away from the typical car and truck projects and dig into that. <laughs> yeah, the remains of a 1970 Thicle Snowcat. Now, if you didn't see when we dragged this thing in, it was a mess. <laughs> A former Forest Service rig from Maryland, it had been beat on and neglected for a long time. But in spite of all the rough edges, there was some good news here. Because the original V4 Ford engine had low hours on it. And with a little bit of time and some tune-up parts, it roared back to life. <laughs> RPM gauge is working. Oil pressure, 30 pounds. So you think I can make this thing move? Yeah. There you go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we followed that up by going through the transmission and the rear axle. So the drivetrain's all good to go. Now it's time to do something about the body. <laughs> that is a lot lighter. Today. <laughs> Just a little. Like a glove. Got it? Yeah. All right, let me get my side up. Okay. Okay, too far. Right. Come back. Right there. <laughs> now, you got to admit, this is cool. Now, these old snowcats usually came in a couple different configurations. One was the cab and flatbed, like this one is, and the other was as a completely enclosed unit. And both of those are great for a snowcat. But if you want to use something like this off-road in another part of the country, well, it'd be kind of nice to have a pickup bed back here to carry junk in. And since the pickup bed was not an option on these, well, the only choice is to make one yourself. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Show you how to make a custom pickup bed to fit whatever you want it to fit. Come on. Now, one option is to try to find a used bed in a junkyard and use this as your starting point. The problem with this is you can pretty much figure that there's some rust and damage that will need to be fixed first. Then there's all the additional work of modifying the bed and cutting it down and narrowing it and doing all that custom work to make it fit your project. Then you just hope and pray that the style fits what you're trying to do. Now, this isn't the best option. A better option comes from LMC Truck because they make replacement bedsides for pretty much every Ford, Chevy, and Dodge truck from the 30s on. So basically, you open up a catalog, you pick the style that you want, and then you get some brand new panels, and that's what you start with. That will save you so much time and money, especially with a custom application, than starting with whatever you find. All right, the bed that we have chosen for this project is a reproduction 48 to 52 Ford bed, 
And we did that because I love the way it angles out and rolls down at the top. And that is a classic hot rod look, and it's going to be really cool with that funky little cab. Now, obviously, the bed in stock configuration is too long, it's too tall, it's wrong in several ways. So the first thing that you need to decide is exactly how you want your bed to fit. First thing we're going to deal with is the length. Now, obviously, the stock tailgate is here, but I want the tailgate to be right there which means we're going to have to whack about 18 inches out of this bed, but we're not going to do it back here. Now we're going to do it out of the middle because we want to keep this cool body line. Now, as far as the height of the bed goes, you need to spend some time here as well because you want the bed to look like it's a factory deal, not just some add-on. And ideally, you want the top of the bed to line up with the body line somewhere. Now, as you can see the way it sits, it doesn't line up with anything. So we got to find a body line first. Now, you have a natural one here at the bottom of the window, and then a couple inches below that, you have this rivet line that slopes down here, matching the slope of the windshield, and leads right into the nose of the vehicle. So this rivet line is the body line we're going to line up with. And as you can see, the bed needs to come down about six inches. With the measurements made, we'll start with the bottom cut, then we'll move on to the center cuts. And if you have a bandsaw, now is the time to use it. You'll also need an extra set of hands to help you control such an odd-shaped panel when you're cutting. Now, for some of the other cuts, an air saw and a sawzall will be required. But whatever you use, it's important to make these cuts as accurate as possible because you're going to have to weld some of this stuff back together. Now, I know you're probably thinking, man, you just took two brand new, fairly expensive bedsides and cut them all to pieces. What are you, crazy? No, not when you see how they're going to go back together. <laughs> Restoring a vehicle. Done right, it can be one of the most rewarding things you can ever undertake. Done wrong, it can turn your life upside down. Shake the money out of your pockets and squeeze the sanity from your brain. Stacy David's Restoration Series is here to help you do it right so you can keep your money and your sanity and enjoy the fruits of your labor. So grab a wrench and let's get cranking. Stacy David's Restoration Series, now streaming exclusively on Amazon Prime. Hey, welcome back to Gears, where we are in the process of building a custom bed for this old snowcat. And the purpose is to show you what's involved in cutting and chopping and modifying a bed to make it fit whatever you want it to fit and have it look like a factory deal. Now, so far, we've taken two brand new bedsides from LMC Truck and chopped them into several pieces. And in the process, we've chopped five inches off the bottom and 18 inches <laughs> out of the center. Now it's time to weld it all back together. And the goal here is to have a perfectly straight panel with no visible weld seams and no warpage. Come on. Okay, our starting point is going to be this round tube across the top because this has got to be arrow straight. If it's a little bit out of alignment or bent up a little bit, <laughs> the whole bed is going to look bad. And you really can't freehand this. You've got to have some sort of a jig to hold it in place. So to do that, we'll slide the two pieces together and then make a simple jig by taking a piece of angle iron and clamping it to the upper tube. This will pull the upper tube into perfect alignment and set the foundation for the rest of the panel. Next, we'll use some panel clamps to bring the panels into alignment down the weld seam. Now, be prepared to do a little tweaking and bending here to make sure everything is lining up perfectly. The more time you spend here, the better the final fit's going to be. All right, the last area to deal with is the bottom. And we got a couple of issues here. First of all, we need to support it to keep it from flexing and moving. And also, we need to put some sort of a flange down here so we can actually bolt this bed into the cat. 
So we'll take a piece of one and a half inch angled steel and cut it to fit the bed. Then we'll punch some holes a couple inches apart down the base of the panel to give us a place for some spot welds. Finally, we'll clamp the steel in place and double check everything. Now, I know that this looks like some sort of a science experiment, but believe me, every one of these clamps are important. And you can get an idea now what this bed's gonna look like. Check out this body line happening here. That's really cool. Now, when you go to weld sheet metal, it's a completely different technique than doing structural steel. If you try to run one big old bead down here, you're gonna warp this all to pieces and just turn it into a pretzel, destroy it. So, what you have to do is go slow and use spot welds so you can move the heat around and not warp the panel. Once you have some welds established, just keep adding spot welds until you finally have a solid weld with no gaps or pinholes. Take your time here. Don't worry about how it looks. The goal here is a good solid weld with no warping or distortion of the panel. And while we're at it, we're gonna go ahead and put some spot welds on the base flange as well. All right, should be good. Okay, once all your welding is done, now comes the grinding and making those spot welds disappear. Also, take care not to overgrind the weld and create a low spot because you'll have to fill that with filler and it weakens the metal by making it thinner. And once again, you have gotta go slow because a grinder can overheat and warp the metal too. And it'd be a shame to do that now. Another reason why it's important to make sure that the bed sides remain extremely straight on a single panel like this is that both sides of the panel have to look equally good. So any warpage you cause will have to be fixed on both the inside and the outside of the bed. So you need to take your time here. Once the welds are all dressed down and everything blended in, you should have an invisible seam with no warpage and a really cool looking pair of bedsides. When Stacy David makes house calls in the big Gears Nation truck, it makes for some pretty special moments. But if they can't come to your garage, the next best thing to do is check out the stuff they have online to help you out. Things like DVDs, wiring and build books, apparel and fender covers are just some of the things you'll find to help you with your project or make a great gift for that certain car nut in your life. If you're ready to get out there, build something, and then go smoke the tires on it, StacyDavid.com can help you do that. Hey, welcome back to Gears on our custom bed project. Now, if you're just getting here, what we've done is take two new reproduction 48 to 52 Ford bedsides and whack 18 inches out of the center of them and five inches off the bottom. Now, what this allowed us to do is create custom bedsides that should be the right length and should be the right height to fit our cool little snowcat. Now, on top of that, it allowed us to take this wheel arch, which used to be back here because of the length, and relocate it to the center of the bed and create this cool little design. Now, after all this work comes the moment of truth. We need to see if these are actually going to fit our snowcat. So, we're going to grab the sawzall and cut off the rear tie down tube to make room for the bed. Now, obviously, once we get the bed fit and mounted, I'll go ahead and remake these ends so they terminate down into the bed floor for a nice clean look. But before we can do that, we need to lift the bed in place and check the fit. 
the giant side there. And you gotta go your way a little bit. <laughs> now, as you can see, all that extra time we spent measuring was worth it because the bed dropped right in place and lined up how we wanted it to. Check this out. The top of the bed lines right up with that rivet line, so the height is perfect. The length of the bed is exactly where we wanted it because the tailgate's going to be right here. So this bed is really cool. Now we're going to jump into cross members and wood. Yeah, I said wood because we're not going to use this as a snowcat anymore. It's an all-terrain vehicle. And anything with a bed looks good with wood in the bed, even if it's a hot rod snowcat. Now, obviously, we're going to need some sort of cross members in that bed, and stock replacements are available for the 48 to 52 Fords. But since that's not what this is, those cross members aren't going to work. So we're going to have to make our own, and we'll just do that out of some angle steel. Now, as far as bed wood goes, LMC has got a kit for the 48 to 52 Ford that includes some really nice oak planks and the stainless steel slats that go between them. The problem is, these are all too long now, obviously. So we're going to have to cut them down to the right length and make them fit the bed. You know, one of the first true freedoms you experience as a kid is that first bicycle. Man, it becomes your transportation to the world, or at least the local neighborhood. And in my neighborhood, man, we all had bikes. And we'd stick playing cards in the spokes, and we'd suck on black licorice, make it look like we were big biker dudes, and it was magic. But a bike wasn't just about transportation. No, it became an extension of your personality. And there were all kinds of bikes out there. There were 10 speeds, there were mountain bikes, there were stingrays, there were BMX bikes, and they all had their strengths and weaknesses. And that's where the idea for the story of the Purple Bicycle came from. Because just like a bike might wish it had the talents or skills of another bike, so do we sometimes overlook our God-given talents and wish we had somebody else's talents, skills, color, abilities, because they seem to be better than ours. It's a simple story. It's a simple lesson, but something we all need to be reminded of from time to time. Welcome back to Gears and how to make your own bed. Now, with the new bed sides cut down and fit on our vintage snowcat, the last step is fitting the wood floor. And all that requires is accurate measurements and a sharp saw. Once the wood is cut and fit, the stainless strips are next. Then we'll just lay them in place and check the fit. Okay, the final piece to this puzzle is a tailgate. And for that, we went to LMC Truck and got this reproduction tailgate, which finishes off the bed. Now, step back, take a look at this thing so you can see how it all works together because it's really cool and it's definitely one of a kind. Now, quick tip brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. When you're getting ready to do some sheet metal work like we did here, there are some clamps and tools that will definitely make your life easier. Now, obviously, we've shown you how effective panel clamps like this are for making good panel alignment, and you need a good assortment of different sizes of locking clamps, C-clamps, and, of course, vice grips. But don't just stop there. 
You also need to get some adjustable angle clamps that allow you to dial in tubing and angles. You also want to look into one of these clamps that has the copper base that will allow you to fill holes without burning through. Then of course there's the Clecos that also help you hold a panel in place. And if you're really serious about fabrication, you probably want to look into a fabrication table like this because this has movable clamps that allows you to put apart wherever you want and clamp it in place. You have horizontal clamps, you have vertical clamps, and all of these walls are movable and everything is perfectly flat. So this is for some precision stuff. Now, the reason all this is important is because if you want straight panels and straight tubing, the key is to holding it in place while you're welding it. And if you get movement while you've clamped it down, you're gonna have movement in the panel. What are you working on? Brought to you by Woodward Fabrication, selling quality metalworking equipment since 1966. Today's What Are You Working On comes from Edith Yates, and this is a unique project because it is a husband and wife project. Now, they decided they wanted to do something together, and so they found an old Volkswagen sand rail that had been left for dead and decided to bring it back to life. Now, they had never done anything like this before. They weren't even sure they could do it, but they wanted to try it. Even though all their friends were like, don't do it, don't stop, no, don't do it. But they decided, nope, we're gonna try it. So, the first thing they did was they disassembled everything and they sanded the frame down and repainted it with Rust-Oleum out of spray cans. Then they rewired it and they redid the damaged sheet metal and they slowly built it up into something that they're proud to drive down the road. Now, the best thing is here, they didn't spend a lot of money on this thing. This is a budget build, but they are having a blast with this thing and that's hot rodding from the very beginning. As you can see, they're still married and they're actually smiling in the picture, so they did something right here. So to recognize such a cool project, we hooked up with our buddies at Woodward Fab. We're gonna give you one of these big bench vices because everybody needs a big vice to bang around on from time to time. And we're gonna give you a couple of gear shirts. Now we're gonna let you decide who gets what because we don't wanna get into the middle of that. Also, we're gonna give you a couple books. We're gonna give you our project planning book so you can plan out your next project. And then when you're ready for a laugh, we've got our new children's book, which gives the antics of a purple bicycle trying to figure out who he is. Then we're gonna give you a gift card from LMC Truck, so that'll get you started into your next project. All right, that wraps it up for us today. I have a snow cat to finish, which means this is the perfect time for you to grab some tools and get out and work on something. We'll see you next time.